Welcome to this webcast to introduce Emerging Trends in Real Estate Europe 2013. This is the annual report produced by the Urban Land Institute and PwC about the real estate industry expectations for the year ahead. Our analysis is based on surveys and interviews with over 500 leading industry figures from across Europe and therefore represents the best barometer about what to expect for real estate in 2013. The three main issues we'll cover in this webcast are firstly the paradox between the relative optimism for the prospects of our respondents' own businesses, which contrasts with pessimism about the macroeconomic picture. Secondly, the challenges of how the debt gap will play out. Bankers are the most pessimistic group amongst our respondents. And finally, the concentration of demand creating winners and losers. I'm joined by Andrew Sentence of PwC, Michael Spees from Tishman Spire, and Josh Short from Internos Global Investors. So Andrew, can we start with you and uh, ask for your thoughts about the apparent contradiction and paradox between the relative optimism about industry prospects compared to the relative pessimism about the macroeconomic picture? Well, I think it's important that you say relative optimism because we're not talking about going back to the sort of economic climate that we had before the financial crisis. And in my view, we're in a, a new normal economic world which has come into being as a result of changes in the global economy and in the financial system. And I think perhaps what is underpinning the responses in this survey is people are beginning to adjust to that. Uh, so they're adjusting to the fact that we're, we're not going to go back to the world before the financial crisis and finding some areas of opportunity there. The areas of opportunity are not where they were in necessarily in the past. Um, they are maybe in activities that can tap into strong growth in Asia Pacific and uh, the international economy, uh, but there are some areas of opportunity emerging, and I think that's what's underpinning some of the optimism we're now seeing. Uh, Michael, from a major, major global developer, investor, property manager perspective, how, how do you see the uh, the picture? Well, clearly, the, uh, as Andrew said, that there isn't the same. There, there's perhaps the sense of imminent crisis has abated, uh, but there's plenty of uncertainty still. So. But it, there's enough stability to where people are making decisions, whether it's tenants uh, looking forward based on business, assuming it will be around to, and, and needs to make decisions, to investors who are making capital available, understanding that there is opportunity now. And there's enough certainty to be forming views as to where there might be uh, money to be made investing in this market. And Joss, from the perspective of a major fund manager in real estate across Europe, how, how do you see this? Well, I think real estate professionals by nature are reasonably optimistic. Um, I still see it as a fairly difficult, turgid operating environment. Um, pressure on margins and profitability in all areas of the real estate sector, investment management, banking, investment banking, surveying. So I'm surprised that the the survey indicates that people are bullish or relatively optimistic about their own businesses in a, in a slightly more difficult and challenging economic environment. And that leads into the second topic that we have identified from the report, and that is the debt gap. How do you think that that uh, is likely to impact both on the industry generally and, and individual business prospects particularly? Well, as everybody knows, um, there's not a lot of debt available for real estate in Europe at, at the moment. Um, if there is debt available, it's for prime uh, properties in, in the best locations. Um, I think if you're an insurance company or a debt fund, you're in a great environment, business environment, over the next probably five to ten years. I think if you're an existing bank with exposures, it's going to be very difficult for a number of years to come. Which reflects the generally pessimistic sentiment amongst bankers, unsurprisingly. Do you see this, Michael, as uh, uh, something that creates opportunity or represents a threat? Well, it's clearly it's a constraint. So looking forward, everybody has to be dealing with there. There is a, a limit, a, a clear limit, and much less debt available. And property, which is a very capital-intensive asset class, uh, has traditionally used quite a bit of debt. So uh, either, I mean, clearly, as Josh said, there, there will, the debt that has come in to fill the space will find very attractive uh, margins and will, be, will do quite well. How much risk that debt really chooses to take will define the degree to which it actually fills the gap. Um, and so the, the opportunity going forward will be 
uh, finding finding assets that have uh, sufficient quality to attract what part of the limited debt that is available and and to to obviously bring that property back to um, a stabilized state. Andrew, from a macroeconomic perspective, how do you see that issue playing out? Well, I think the financial crisis is clearly casting a, a big shadow across the um, recovery as we're seeing it in, in Europe and other economies. It's creating slow growth. Um, it means that there's an overhang of, of um, non-performing loans that have to be dealt with in the banking sector. Um, and those, these, these are issues that are going to uh, you know, be with us for a number of years. It can only be worked off over a number of years. Um, but on the more positive side, we're in the new global economy now, which is being shaped by strong growth in the Asia-Pacific region and emerging markets. So parts of the property world that can tap into that growth um, is possibly uh, still going to do relatively well, and those are going to be major international centres, uh, places where uh, international business is keen to invest. Um, that's going to be perhaps the main source of um, uh, growth in this new environment. So we're looking at an environment where there's going to be winners and losers. Uh, Joss, where, where do you see the, the winners being and where do you see the losers uh, falling? Well, I think <coughs> from an investment management perspective, investors want yield, coupon, dividend. So people will be searching for real estate assets that give you that when uh, equities are volatile and bonds are expensive. So I think it's got to be um, decent properties with long leases with uh, significantly good covenants. And that's where the, the market will tend to focus. Um, that's, I think, very much on the traditional investing side. On the opportunistic side, there'll be distressed debt, as Andrew mentioned, uh, vulture investing, turnaround. Um, which definitely will have its place and is probably going to grow as banks seek to deleverage at prices that they're now marking their loans to. Michael, what's the view from across uh, the, uh, the US towards Europe? Is that uh, uh, more positive? Are, are, is the European market seen as a winner or still as a loser? Well, it, it couldn't have gotten more negative. Uh, certainly going back a year ago, uh, the, you know, the, the consistent view from the U.S. was was very, very bearish on Europe, uh, largely because people couldn't understand how this political uh, experiment was going to work. Uh, and I think things are, in the U.S., generally things are uh, much more optimistic, certainly as it relates to the U.S., and, and less pessimistic as it relates to Europe. Certainly people, I think, broadly see that um, the crisis which people feared didn't didn't um, take hold. And so generally people are, I think there's a more positive view, but that again is, is coming from a very negative uh, base. Andrew, um, from a broader perspective, where do you see across Europe the winners and losers falling? Well, we're seeing a process of structural adjustment going on in Europe, and um, that is uh, a position where the northern European economies are better placed, they have more flexibility um, and perhaps more competitive advantages in the new world and the, the countries that are finding it more, most difficult are in, in, in southern Europe. Um, but more generally I think we need to look forward uh, to find new senses of opportunity rather than look back at the consumer and finance driven growth we saw before the financial crisis. So the new areas of opportunity are going to come from emerging markets in the Asia-Pacific region and businesses and activities that are linked into that source of growth. And they're possibly going to come in terms of new technologies, uh, low-carbon technologies, emphasis on energy efficiency. Um, so it's important not to try and look back to the old normal world, but to try and identify the structural changes that are taking place and where in the, in the world economy we can now see new areas of opportunity. And concentrating on those opportunities, looking to 2013, Michael, where would you be looking to invest, both geographically and by sector? Well, w within within Europe, our, our focus has always been within the major cities of Europe, and certainly looking forward, uh, nothing would change that view. I think um, I think clearly uh, the opportunity is in working with the dynamic that Joss described earlier where capital will continue to be focused on, on the best assets which produce income. Um, the opportunity will be around working with assets which have the potential to become those assets which might have fallen out of that uh, status just 
by virtue of the fact that either it's they, they're suffering some vacancy or they will be suffering near-term vacancy. So the, the process of taking the risk of re-letting those properties and investing in those properties produces the opportunity. Just where will Internos be investing in 2013? I think we'll be following our investors, and, and that'll definitely be Northern Europe, not Southern Europe, and it will be uh, properties that are generating uh, cash flow and income and coupon, as I described earlier. I'm, I'm with Michael. I think if you can get if you can get debt into the sort of value add space of property, i.e., turning around um, or refurbishing or redeveloping uh, existing properties in good locations that will also start happening. We haven't seen too much of that apart from London and Paris, but that may emerge in a number of other cities in 2013 uh, if you can get the debt. And finally, Andrew, uh, if you have the choice, would you be an investor in real estate in 2013? Well, I, I think you have to be selective in this current environment and to focus on areas which can tap into the, the new sources of growth in the global economy coming from emerging markets in Asia. Um, and perhaps the areas that are going to be more difficult are things that did well in the consumer-driven growth before 2007, but consumers have now got a lot of uh, stresses and strains on their finances across Europe, uh, and hence we're not going to go back to that consumer environment. Um, and while some prime locations may do well, uh, there's quite a big process of adjustment going on in the retail sector. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts, and thank you for joining us.